so this is something I saw on, originally on Good News Network today. And well, I was telling everyone earlier, I spent probably a solid two hours, maybe more, uh, digging through corporate paperwork, laws, all kinds of stuff on this topic right here. Because I read about this new Florida community that was designed for resilience, survived Hurricane Ian virtually unscathed. That is the headline from Good News Network. Now, that's good. That itself is a white pill. There's a community. It's in Florida. It's 20 miles away from Fort Myers. And they had uh, some tiles off the roofs. That was it. Hmm. And I was so to say, was it in like Miami? Where no, the hurricane no it was 20 miles away from Fort Myers. Okay. And basically no damage, no flooding. They didn't lose power. They mm -hmm. didn't lose internet. They didn't lose anything. And so that's cool. That's a good thing. What happened? So let me tell you what the story is here from Good News Network, and I'll get you into the story, um, the macro level story here. Even as 2 million Floridians lost power during the recent hurricane, one unique community survived intact. Despite being located around 20 miles from Fort Myers, the heart of the devastation, Babcock Ranch's blend of solar power, native flora, and built-to-co construction has meant that apart from ripped up pool coverings, broken fence posts, and a missing shingle or two, they never even lost power. Built around 25 feet higher on average than surrounding communities, Babcock Ranch is beyond the reach of stormwaters. I, would, I would never say that. What? Beyond the reach of stormwaters? Well, mean, I mean, so far. If it's 26 feet. <laughs> if we had 26 feet stormwaters, <laughs> right. yeah, then, that, then it can... Then it can get in there for sure, but that typically uh, it's not the case. I mean, even in Nashville, we had water that probably was twenty five feet or close to when it was over when it was over twenty four on Bell Road. I mean, yeah, that was that was pretty high. What would you say it was close to twenty four feet? It was probably it was probably close to that. Yeah, yeah. Was, so, I, I'm just saying, never say never. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, it's not you, it's the weather. With buildings specified for Cap 4 hurricane winds of 145 mile, miles per hour, Babcock passed the test. Built in 2018, the town has its own wastewater plant and water system that penetrates deep into an underground aquifer. Drinking water wasn't contaminated and never shut off. 700,000 solar panels owned by Florida Power and Light Provide every home with electricity, and despite covering an area of 900 acres, they remarkably sustain minimal damage. Neither power nor internet ever went out. The solar panels provided power to a storm shelter that wasn't even expected to be used because of the late delivery of a diesel generator. The last minute the shelter was opened and remained the only one in the area that still had power. Residents have organized several donation drives to help out communities less fortunate to them. Quote, it is a constant outpouring of support from Babcock Ranch residents who know how incredibly fortunate they are to have homes and communities still intact, hmm. someone said. All right, so I also saw a lot of other articles, like that website Common Dreams, which is like a commie, it's like a socialist-leaning organization they're always posting about. The you know, it's, like, it's like a Bernie. Commie Dreams. Like Bernie, commie, wet dreams website mm. kind of thing. Yep. And so they posted about it, talking about how the solar panels are helping that we all have to move towards this climate resiliency for the future because of climate change and all that. And that's what all these news articles are about. And I'm telling you all of them because I read all of them today to make sure that none of them covered some of the other important stuff. And the government is the one who put this plan this, in place, this obviously, right? is this. a planned community. That is as far as anyone ever said in any articles. Mm -hmm. The planned community. Led by a benevolent leader. Government, yeah. Yeah, government, right? And, and so what no one ever mentioned in any of the articles, here's a bunch of headlines right here. Uh, I went through all of them, Business Insider, um, all of these articles talking about sustainable and resilient. Here was its first test. CBS News, Hurricane Ian destroyed power systems and ravaged homes. One Southwest Florida community completely powered by solar escaped with little damage. CNN, this 100% solar community endured Hurricane Ian with no loss of power and minimal damage. So let's talk about Babcock Ranch here for a sec. Because I read through all this and I noticed one thing in the Good News Network article which is that they had their own wastewater plant and water system that penetrates deep into an underground aquifer. 
That reminded me that Florida has these interesting districts that we've talked about in the past as it pertains to Disney, because Disney essentially operates their own little government inside of Florida. Well, Disney's not the only place that has that. The Babcock Ranch Independent Special District was the second was the second special district in Florida after the Reedy Creek Improvement District, which is where Disney is. And I, I just I just wanted to mention that none of the articles mention this whatsoever at, at all. I'll, it was a planned community, 100% solar. And the solar, by the way, is provided by Florida Power and Light. So they got to put in there that Florida is providing the solar power for this community. To make you think that it, this was government. Yes. Yeah. But I, I did go in, I looked into all of their paperwork, the Babcock Ranch Community Independent Special District. That's what it's called. If you're watching the video, you'll see that I pulled screenshots of all of this stuff. And what you're watching right now is Nate Thurston, journalist from GML Journalist. Live. Yes. I did some deep journalism. Did you do interviews? Did you call these people? I did not. No, I just read a That's whole bunch of stuff. That's the next step in your journalism That's the next, process. Yeah, yeah. The next, you'll be on the phone. The next leg of the career. Ask if they want to make a comment. So, by the way, the Babcock Ranch was purchased in 2006 for about $500 million by this firm called Kitson & Partners, which is a real estate development. Uh, Interestingly enough, Kitson, the guy who started this thing, used to play for the Packers and the Cowboys in Mm -hmm. uh, in the 80s. So they provide their own water, sewage, road, schools, security, all that all that stuff. And just to make sure that that was the case, because these districts are all a little bit different. You know, I don't know what exactly it is that they provide. I went through the actual bill from uh, 2007 when this went out that created this independent special district just to make sure. And so I went through here and I found all the stuff where they create the district. And then they talk about, they're going to provide water management control of the lands. The district is going to have power to do that. Uh, provide water supply, sewer, wastewater management, all those things, bridges, culverts, all that stuff, Uh, highways, streets, roads, trails, pathways, tons of stuff going on here. Parks, how about that? Fire prevention and control, including fire stations, emergency medical and rescue response services, school buildings and related structures, all of this stuff. I think there's five schools inside of this thing. Security. Got all kinds of stuff. And how do they pay for all this stuff? Well, they sell bonds. They're able to sell bonds like a lot of governments do. And then they pay those back by taking in property taxes from from the uh, people who live there. By the way, the people who vote on how much the property taxes can be, you got to be a property owner inside of the place to be able to vote on what the taxes are going to be. Ooh. Interesting. Slavery. <laughs> Weird that you have to be a property owner. To vote on property taxes. Okay. So first off, this is just pretty cool. This is a localized, essentially a government that was created by a corporation, a real estate development corporation. By a former Cowboys player. By a former Cowboys player. Yeah. The extra white pill. Yeah. He only go. played the, for the Cowboys for like half a season. Doesn't I looked matter. it up in 1984. <laughs> so, That's fine. Not anyone I recognize. Played for the Packers for like five years, though. Boo. It's definitely not where he got all of his money. Mm-mm. And so this is... Aside from all these news stories, first off, they didn't lose power. Sure, they're uh, sustainable. They got their solar panels. They got all this stuff going on. But the government is the one that provides all of that stuff, right? Mm. So we'll talk about that a little bit too. I went on to Florida's website, and they had this 800-slide-long PowerPoint presentation. I pulled one of them. It says reasons that they create special districts. They empower citizens that govern their own neighborhood or community. It's like a big HOA. It is. Yeah. They serve as a financing mechanism for the public and private sectors to govern, finance, construct, operate, and maintain essential public services and facilities. Uh, they provide enhanced or specialized public services in response to citizen demand that a county or municipality may be unable or unwilling to offer. Uh, they focus costs only on only those who benefit from the services and facilities as opposed to everyone. And they save money for citizens by selling tax-exempt bonds. So that's that's pretty cool. Now I went through some I went in the Wayback Machine. This actually was in the Wayback Machine to this article from the New York Times. I wanted to figure out how how people felt about this whole thing. Was it easy for them to do this? So I went back to when they created this. This thing almost didn't happen. 
And I want everyone to remember, this is an area that has a city that just got hit by an almost Category 5 hurricane. Nearly Category 5. And withstood. That withstood. and in the face of the storm. Kitson himself stayed in the community to ride out the storm just to make sure it was good, by the way. Yeah. I also thought that that was pretty cool. So I went into this New York Times article. They were talking about him buying this uh, back in 2006. Ellen Peterson, an environmentalist who opposes the development, called the Babcock deal a tragedy for Southwest Florida. Ruby Daniels, who's 67 and has lived near the Babcock Ranch her entire life, said, A culture is about to vanish. People who love the rural, rural lifestyle feel powerless right now. The state should have tried harder to acquire the entire ranch. Now, that's an interesting part. You see, when this was being sold, the state was trying to buy it themselves, and they couldn't get the bid up high enough. And so these people are mad that the state didn't actually get the land, that this guy got the land. What do you think would have happened in this area if the state would have just bought all the land? Do you think that this 100% sustainable perfect community would have existed a few years later it probably would have been better it would have been just better yeah. after that streets yeah. would have been made of gold <laughs> of course you know of course that everybody would have health care yeah and that's the problem there there's no college or university that's free and people don't have free health care there the coalition of environmental groups audubon of florida a thousand friends of florida the everglades foundation the everglades trust and the florida wildlife federation began negotiations with Mr. Kitson over issues ranging from hunting permits to sewage treatment. Uh, it was when the groups announced their support of the deal that the Florida legislature appropriated the money for the purchase. So it wasn't until the environmental groups decided that they were going to support it. And after that, by the way, the Sierra Club still tried to stop them from building this. They tried really hard to go to the county and block this. Uh, because they wanted to uh, prevent the urban sprawl and endangering wildlife. So anyway, they, they mentioned in this that it was very, very close to this not happening at all. And they said if, the, if they wouldn't have bought it, that the people who owned it before them would have just sold it off and they would have developed the entire thing. In this case, like 99% of it still didn't get developed. It was the largest land deal ever in Florida history, other than Florida itself when it was a land deal. So, all right, let's go just a little bit further into this. Here's another way it almost didn't happen. You know, we mentioned that Florida, well, they're the ones providing all these solar panels. You know, that's why they're able to be 100% sustainable. This is back in 2014. They made a deal with Florida Power and Light, the uh, real estate development firm did. It ends months of squabbling before the Florida Public Service Commission over proposal by the Babcock Ranch Community Independent Special District to create its own power utility for the planned development. Kitson and partners behind the Babcock Ranch project had intended to create a separate utility franchise to serve the community through unique approvals of Florida lawmakers granted amid the Great Recession. But the Lee County Electric Cooperative, which also had been slated to sell power in that area, challenged Babcock's plan, saying that the new utility would cost it revenue and make it raise rates for its members. So... The Lee County Electric Cooperative. Now, the important part here is that they actually didn't want to even go through Florida for any of these solar panels. They were going to do it themselves. Yeah. And the Lee County Electric Cooperative, who was going to be selling in this area, said that this would hurt their revenue. So they were blocking them from being able to make their own solar panels. So then the big guy comes over the top, which is Florida Power and Light, uh, which also sells energy to Lee County. They came in and said, you know what? We're just going to do it. We're just going to provide the solar panels. We'll settle this. Yeah. And so that's how they settle on it. So when people talk about how the state has provided these solar panels, keep in mind that is because the state literally blocked this company from building their own solar panels and said that they were going to do it and they wanted them to buy from the state. Just, yeah. just something else to, uh, to. to keep in mind. The world's most sustainable city. I found tons of articles about this whole thing. And I think it's important to mention the white pill as we go long on this topic right now. This is all from a private company going and basically getting an independent government status inside of a state and creating this community. And if they wouldn't have done that, probably wouldn't have any that exist. It's pretty cool. It's awesome. Yeah. And they tried to do even more, but the government wouldn't let yeah. them. Yeah. So instead, the government. Imagine how much cheaper it would be if they had their own solar panels. So. 
they I Can saw you imagine, like how crazy is that that you own land mm-hmm. and you can't put whatever you want on it. Yeah. Like that's just pretty crazy in America because you might affect the in other America. If you start a power company, which is what they wanted to do, they wanted to start a power company in the area. The other power company that would have been selling to them was upset about that because that would hurt their revenue. Of course it So they were able to block them from starting their own power company. (sighs) Free market at its finest right there. It's unfettered capitalism. (laughs) It is. Unfettered corporate greed. 